First of all, I would like to thank you for your interest in the webinar call for projects 2024 of the Mitigation Action Facility. If you go to the next slide, you will see our objectives for today's uh, webinar. So the idea is to provide an overview of the Mitigation Action Facility, to give a detailed explanation of the call for projects 2024, in particular the process and the timing of the call for projects, share some lessons learned from our previous calls for projects 2023, and at the end, answer your questions and point to useful resources. So here we have the team that will guide you through th this webinar. We all work in the Technical Support Unit, TCU, that is the Secretariat of the Mitigation Action Facility. First, we have Juan David Jaramillo, who is our sector lead for energy and financial mechanism lead. Next, we have Nina, who is the sector lead of waste and coal management lead. Then we have Per, our sector lead in industry. And, and finally, there is me, Luisa, at TCU Inter. The agenda for the webinar is as follows. The first section, I will say a few words about the technical setup of this webinar. And then Nina will briefly introduce to the mitigation action facility. In the third section, Nina will dive deeper into the call for projects 2024, give some features, timeline, and provide with some useful resources. And in the fourth section, Per and Juan David will provide some lessons learned from, from the previous call. Last, uh, we will be collecting your questions of in the chat during this webinar, I picked them up in the Q&A section. If not today, we will respond to them on the next website, in, the, in our website. Or if you have an urgent request, please send an email to our contact email. And now I want to start with the technical overview. This webinar is developed in Microsoft Teams. So on the top right of your control panel, you will see that the camera is off. Uh, another point, if you need subtitles, you can see three dots on the top of your screen, which will say more when you click on them. So you can then click on the language and the speech and further click on turn off captions. This will give you live subtitles or captions during this webinar. You can also click on the right side for the three dots and then click on change caption language and then you can select the language that you want to see the subtitles. Please do remember that you can post your questions in the chat. Now I would like to hand over to my colleague Nina for the second section of the webinar. Thank you very much, Louisa. Uh, hello, everyone. And without further ado, I will jump into the topic of the Mitigation Action Facility to explain what it is uh, to a participant that don't know so far um, the fund. So first of all, the Mitigation Action Facility is a multilateral fund. It was established with another name as an AMA facility in 2013. On the right side of the slide, you can see some metrics or indicators or achievements um, that so far the Mitigation Action Facility and its predecessor, NAMA facility, has achieved. Um, in order to respond to the climate emergency, um, the Mitigation Action Facility provides a blend of funds for technical and financial cooperation through bilateral projects that are selected in annual calls. Those projects, of course, focus on um, climate change mitigation, and need to demonstrate how climate finance can catalyze transformational change. Um, the mitigation action facility is relevant politically because it is aligned with the BRICS agenda, with national determined contributions, long-term strategies, and, and UNFCCC process overall. Um, and as one of the most recent metrics of our success, we are very glad that the previous call for projects um, that was launched in June 2023, attracted more than 300 applications, uh, project concepts submitted from 100 
five countries, which means that this topic is extremely important, extremely relevant, and um, is something that is sought uh, by applicants. Um, what are the key, another key aspect of the mitigation action facility is its focus on priority sectors. So there are sectors of energy, transport and industry. Uh, annually, uh, they contribute cumulatively 67% to the global emissions. And those sectors are, um, that's why they are targeted uh, basically by the mitigation action facility, considering the immense potential in, within those sectors um, in terms of the uh, reduction of greenhouse gas emissions. Um, of course, the mitigation action facility also welcomes projects that are cross-sector and linked to one of the priority sectors. As an example, projects that we have in our portfolio or so as applications um, among as part of our calls for projects in the sector of energy, it's renewable energy, integration and storage of renewable energy, energy efficiency. Transport is not only restricted to land transport, but also includes shipping, aviation, sustainable fuels, charging infrastructure and development infrastructure for sustainable transport overall. And industry, of course, um, includes optimization and resource, more sustainable resource use in the production processes, in the product use and covers both heavy and light industry. Uh, more information priority sectors can be found on the website of the mitigation action facility. So how the facility works? We, as I said before, we have annual calls for projects. Um, those are competition based. So we are looking for um, project ideas from for the project that will be implemented in ODA eligible countries, focused on the three priority sectors, as I mentioned before, or cross-sector projects linked to one of the priority sectors. Those projects are country-driven. We uh, aim for a diversity of delivery partners, increased quality and innovation. What those projects are about is a combination of technical assistance and financial mechanisms. Um, so technical assistance is used to develop capacities, to provide policy support and advice, and in general to create favorable environment for the uh, dissemination and proliferation of the mitigation technology or practice that is supported by the project. Um, and financial mechanism is a um, set of tools or uh, an instrument, a one tool, a financial product that is expected to facilitate the market development for the mitigation technology or practice, unlock public and private investment, facilitate scaling and replication of solutions in country and ensure sustainability beyond the project. Um, why to apply for funding under the mitigation action facility, considering that the projects that we are looking for are quite complex. Nevertheless, um, sustainability of those projects is one aspect. Another aspect is that the funding provided with the mitigation action facility does not assume debt burden, burden so 100% of funding is grant-based. The facility is open to all and does not require an accreditation process. Um, we also strive, as I mentioned before, for strong national ownership, for an alignment of projects with NDCs and actual contribution of the projects um, to implementation of NDCs, alignment with national development strategies and plans. Um, the technical support unit or secretariat of the mitigation action facility provides advice um, at all phases of the project cycle. You will see it is quite uh, complex as well, but that's why we strive to provide as much support as possible to applicants at the any at every stage of the pro process, pro project development and selection process. Um, the projects um, combine technical assistance and financial support. It, they can have a volume of up to 25 million euro um, for for the combination of those two. Uh, tools. Um, the facility is quite flexible. Uh, we understand the dynamic conditions in which projects are operating and considering that the duration of a project can be between three and uh, 5.5 years, um, 
there are a lot of changes that can occur. Um, so the facility strives to remain flexible and consider economic, social, political uncertainties and uh, specific context. Um, and there is a great networking potential within the mitigation action facility. We strive for knowledge sharing, for learning and for networking between um, the applicants and participants. That's in a nutshell about the mitigation action facility, goals behind, idea behind the fund. And now I would like to talk a bit more about the call for projects 2024 that were that was launched on the 6th of December um, during the COP28 in um, Dubai. So motive for this call is continuous action, consistent impact. So we strive to remain consistent um, in regard to the previous call, called for Projects 2023. So there are no um, changes in rationale or um, project cycle or selection process in comparison to the call for projects um, 2023. We continue focusing on three priority sectors, as I mentioned before, energy transport industry or cross-sector projects are linked to one of the priority sectors. There is continuous focus on implementation of national determined contributions and further on potential of the projects to contribute to long term strategies. To uh, UNFCCC processes and of course there is a very strong emphasis on global cooperation and NDC partnership. The overall funding volume of the call for projects 2024 is uh, similar to previous ones up to 100 million euro and an upper funding volume per project is 25 million euro. Um, as I mentioned again, uh, it's a grant based funding um, that is used for a combination of technical assistance and financial mechanisms. And similarly to the call for projects 2023, in call for projects 2024, your first step in application is a submission of a project concept, uh, which is a simplification of the process in comparison to how it was uh, done before. A few additional key features, um, again, it's this consistent um, action um, uh, with regard to call 2023 to those who applied under the call for project 2023. We have a limit of 10 project concepts per applicant. You will see it on the next slide. Um, there is an upper limit of up to 25 project concepts that uh, will be selected to proceed to the outline phase. Um, there also still will be an opportunity to receive support in outline development, uh, which will be provided to a small number of project concepts out of the 25 selected that will be submitted by applicants that have limited previous experience with the mitigation action facility. There is still continuously a um, possibility to pilot novel technologies. You can find more information about that in the general information document. All links will be provided. I won't talk about that a lot today. And there's, of course, public and private actors invited to submit project concepts. Um, on the next slide, you will see a project cycle in a simplified manner. So, as I said, what is important now is that the call is launched. Uh, and the first step is submission of a project concept. Project concept can be submitted through an open application platform of the mitigation action facility. All links are on the website. Um, the Open application platform is operational already in, in a test mode. Um, you can register, um, but the official start date for submission of, for possible submission of the project concept under the call for projects 2024 is 11th of December. So on Monday, um, please uh, go to the open application platform and you will be able to see um, the um, Field the fields for submission of a project concept. The project concept has a very slim structure. It's um, there are questions that you are supposed to provide responses to, um, and it's around eight pages. The, que the questions are about the starting situation. So, what is the business as usual scenario? What you propose? What you want to do? What is the envisioned financial mechanism? How it is. Um, justified based on the business model that will be established by the project, what is the technical assistance that you want to provide, what are your envisioned target groups, and what is the potential mitigation potential of the project. Um, the level of detail will grow um, as, um, as you move forward. If you are selected for outline phase, you will basically along the same 
um, aspects, you will need to elaborate your uh, activities or information on your um, impact in more detail. The same goes if you are selected from uh, the outline phase to the development of the project proposal. You will have to, again, justify, elaborate all the activities in more detail. But that's not the focus of um, this part of the webinar. Um, this part of the webinar is about the submission of the concepts and which is a project idea. And it is a rather initial starting mandatory step in order to participate in the call for projects 2024. As I said before, already a few times more information and very detailed information can be find, uh, found in the general information document. And we would encourage you to read through the general information document and all supporting materials that are available on the website. Basically, next slide is just a more detailed um, view of the different decision making processes, who is responsible for what. And um, again, the part that is highlighted is the submission of project concepts, uh, which will take place. Uh, this phase will uh, take place between 11th of December and 29th of February. And as I said, it's mandatory first step for your idea to be considered under the call for projects 2024. Um, the slides will be uh, published on the website, so don't worry. You don't uh, need to memorize everything now. Um, uh, you will be able to take another look um, uh, uh, at this presentation. And what is also important, you see other dates um, around the most important um, steps of the uh, within the project cycle. Um, those are tentative uh, so far, but um, what is um, already set in stone is the time frame for the development and submission of project concepts. Um, who can submit a project concept? It's um, another a bit um, a rather complicated chart because there are different um, applicants, or we also use the term applicant support partner, um, at different stages of the project development and project selection. Um, what is important for you? Again, it's project concept phase. Um, under the project concept phase, basically everyone can apply. National Ministry can serve as an applicant or any legal entity. It can be a local NGO or commercial entity, um, financial institution, national uh, development bank, international bilateral development agency, international financial institution, and so on and so forth. So we really open the project concept phase to all types of applicants. We want to receive as many ideas about the projects that can contribute to national determined contributions, can help reduce greenhouse gas emissions. We simply want to get as many of those ideas as possible from all types of applicants. On, if you move on during the project selection cycle, um, you will see that um, there are certain specific requirements in terms of who can submit an outline, who can submit a proposal. But in those regards, um, the TSU, the Secretariat of the Mitigation Action Facility, will always be able to support you and consult you. So far, it is important that project idea, project concept can be submitted by basically any entity, including national ministries, agencies, and so on and so forth. The only thing to keep in mind, and you see it on the slide already, is that um, the funding provided by the mitigation action facility follows the public benefit purpose. So it is mandatory for each project. An economic, an individual economic advantage or commercial benefit profit cannot be generated with the use of the mitigation action facility funds and only reasonable costs directly related to the project plus reasonable overheads can be covered by the mitigation action facility funds. It is the second aspect, especially it's rather uh, budgetary specific, but worth keeping in mind already now when you develop your project concept, we cannot disclose what reasonable costs or reasonable overheads are in order not to distort the competition. But in this regard, you also can be can, can, can stay assured that in case the project idea is good and um, the assessment is, is strong, um, the Secretariat of the Mitigation Action Facility um, and the facility grant agent 
the role that is played by GIZ, a German development, bilateral development agency, will get in contact with you and on a case by case basis, um, the question of overheads, reasonable costs will be discussed. You can find uh, a bit more information again in as a general information document, so I would recommend you to browse through it. And last but not least, from my side, a sneak peek into the assessment of projects. Um, those are the criteria that are um, valid for um, all stages of the project selection. So we assess project concept, project outlines, project proposals based on those four key aspects. Um, but of course, with the different expectations in terms of the level of detail. Um, but I, I guess it will help you in developing your project concept if you keep in mind that, of course, what is assessed is the mitigation potential, because mitigation action facility is a fund focusing on the projects that reduce greenhouse gas emissions. We are not an adaptation fund. If adaptation is a co-benefit, it's good, but the focus is on reduction of greenhouse gas emission. We are very interested in financial mechanisms, and my colleagues uh, will talk more about that when they present lessons learned from the Colco Projects 2023 from the concept phase. So financial mechanism is something that can ensure sustainability of your intervention, that the market will actually start operating independently and sustainably, even when the project funds are not there, uh, in order to continuously um, help um, or, or continuously um, ensure continuous dissemination of the mitigation technology or practice, technical and economic viability. So why is a specific technology has been chosen? Uh, why the project can actually operate in a sustainable manner should also be explained and is taken into consideration. And barrier analysis. This is the, actually a starting point for developing your project concept is what is the actual barriers for the, um, for the mitigation technologies in the countries that you want to implement your project and how those barriers can be addressed. What are the technical issues that should be tackled in terms of their capacities, policies, mm, fiscal conditions maybe, and what are the financial mechanisms that can actually make it possible for private sector and for public sector to invest in those technologies and what prevents them from investing now. I will stop here. And because a lot of relevant information will be provided by my colleagues Juan David and Per with regard to lessons learned from the concept phase of the Call for Projects 2023. So Juan David, um, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Nina. Um, as mentioned, now we are going to go to the lessons learned uh, for the concept phase of this Call for Projects 2023. And let us start first with some of the interesting features that we encounter among these different concepts. So the first thing is that we encountered several projects that were focused on hard to abate industries, such as cement, steel, the chemical industry, but also tackling on maritime and air transport. And the interesting part of this project is that they did not only focus on seeking the mitigation at the early production stages, for example, of the cement or steel sectors, but they also targeted the whole supply chain. And this allowed them to, of course, increase the mitigation potential of the project, but also to increase the potential for transformational change that the project could pursue. Another interesting feature is that we continue seeing projects that uh, propose the use of a proven technology at a larger scale that could help to prove and enhance their commercial uh, viability in a given context. Of course, uh, as, the, as it was mentioned by Nina, the Mitigation Action Facility is focused on three key sectors, energy, transport, and industry. Uh, however, we continue to see projects that actually um, propose to use mitigation technologies and practices uh, that can be applied over more than one sector. This is, for example, uh, the case that we have seen of waste to energy projects that actually utilize agricultural waste for the generation of energy in biogas plants. If we move to the next slide, uh, we can now uh, start covering the things that we notice and that we like, that we continue to encourage you to keep doing moving forward. And 
we can start with um, a very good positive thing is that we were continue or we uh, receive concepts that were submitted that countries that we uh, saw only for the first time applying to the mitigation action facility. Um, this makes us very happy because we can see that the changes done in the process have actually opened the doors for more and more countries to uh, start thinking about these mitigation projects. Um, of course, this also helped create a highly diverse pool of applicants uh, where multiple national organizations were at the front front of developing these applications, uh, these concepts, and this is a positive sign also uh, for the ownership and potential sustainability of the project even after its end. Furthermore, um, we also encounter conservative timelines regarding the start of the mitigation, uh, which is particularly relevant for projects uh, where the bulk of the emission reductions will occur uh, beyond the project's timeline. Um, we like this because, as usual, we encourage projects um, to be ambitious in their mitigation potential and the leverage potential, but also um, to be uh, to aim for realistic and feasible goals and timelines. Um, furthermore, um, as I mentioned earlier, as one of the interesting features, um, we saw projects tackling issues of mitigation reduction in a cross-border manner, uh, targeting technologies and practices that can spawn across multiple countries, as it was the case of maritime transportation projects. And last but not least is that we are happy to see that more and more applicants are continuing to develop a barrier, a barrier analysis that does not only focus on the financial and economical barriers, but also include social, cultural, behavioral barriers, as well as uh, regulatory barriers, which are critical uh, to be tackled in order to have a sustainable result of the project implementation. If we move to the next slide, uh, we are now going to start taking a look to areas where we want to bring your attention due to their importance and that we want to recommend you to fully cover in your concepts in order to have the strongest concept possible. And let us start as with those related to the business model and the financial support mechanisms. Um, so key financial, the first point is that key financial data must be provided. Uh, data and information such as the expected inflows and outflows of the business model and uh, key indicators such as the net present value or the return over investment that is expected from this business model. Um, this uh, financial data or information can be derived from existing pilot projects in the country, uh, but it can also be deri derived from comparable cases in other countries around the world. Um, please do not forget to describe the business model behind the project. A viable business model is key for the sustainability of the project. Furthermore, um, the selection of the financial support mechanisms uh, starts in the barrier analysis, as the financial mechanism should tackle the existing barriers uh, that prevent the investment on these mitigation technologies. So please make sure to justify the selection of your financial mechanism in order to make clear why you are picking it. We are also asking you to compare it with a alternative financial mechanisms and to justify why your selection is the best suited for the support of the project. At the same time, uh, and similarly, make sure to present a clear justification for the need of support from the mitigation action facility to actually implement your project. It's very important for us to understand why these funds are required to guarantee a successful implementation and long-term change in the sector where you want to work. Clearly state how the funds will be distributed across the different financial mechanisms that you are proposing, if it's more than one, and please avoid any global figures and use uh, more than one figure to describe how the funds are distributed across your financial support mechanism. Um, similarly, make sure 
to also differentiate between the financial component of your project and the budget that is being targeted to the technical uh, cooperation component of the project. We want to see a uh, clearly detailed information on how the budget will be distributed among these key areas of the project. Uh, of course, we invite you to consult uh, our previous webinars and publications on these topics on the business model and financial support mechanisms that you can find in our website, which link is being provided here on the slides that you can access later on when distributed. We can move to the next slide where um, we can start talking about uh, the lessons learned in terms of the theory of change. So, first and foremost is, please uh, make sure to describe clearly how the project will start a change to a carbon neutral pathway in the sector that you're targeting. Um, this includes uh, any promotion of uh, update, review, or change of regulatory frameworks, uh, how maybe new market behaviors will be introduced by the project, and of course, uh, how or what is the outlook and the effect for long-term political support that the project is expected to achieve. When we are talking about the sustainability of the project, uh, please focus on explaining how the change introduced by the project will remain in place after the end of implementation of the project. And do not stop in only describing how the project actually fits with sustainability goals uh, that might be in place for the country or the world at large. Now, when we talk about the project scope, um, it is important uh, that you take consideration of the value chain of the, the project as a whole, uh, especially uh, in projects such as in the sector such as transport, uh, that in this uh, in this round of concepts were mostly focused in targeting different means of transportation, uh, rather to focusing on the whole infrastructural set that would be required to en enable these means of transportation. Uh, this could be the case, for example, of focusing on introducing electric vehicles, but uh, not covering also, for example, uh, the charging infrastructure that will be required to uh, provide power for these vehicles. Mm. Of course, it is very important that uh, you address the regulatory and behavioral issues that could prevent the successful implementation of the projects. And these issues should be covered as part of your uh, barrier analysis. The last point that I want to uh, highlight regarding the project scope is that cross-sectoral projects need to have a clear connection to one of the core sectors of the mitigation action facility, those being energy, transport, and industry. Uh, it is not enough to just incorporate in your project a component that involves one of those core sectors. The component needs to be a critical part of the project. Uh, as I provide an example earlier, I'm going to provide one now, uh, in which uh, a case of a waste project where a few diesel trucks uh, will be replaced uh, with electric alternative is not sufficient. Um, we want to see the component of transport that is supposed to be reflected here with the case of replacing these diesel trucks to not be just a small component of the project, but be a critical part of it. How, in this case, you will replace the whole, uh, for example, the whole uh, subsector of transportation or heavy transportation vehicles to convert them from diesel to another a cleaner alternative. Let's move on to another topic in the next slide. Um, where we can cover uh, the issues regarding the mitigation technology. Uh, first and foremost, uh, please make sure that the number of units uh, are clearly as specified in your concept. Um, the number of units that you um, expect to support as part of your project can be also being uh, derived from pilot studies or from similar projects uh, worldwide. You don't need to have uh, a number that will not change uh, as you progress through the selection of projects moving forward, but you need to have a clear uh, number already identified 
that could set also a baseline moving forward. Um, the selection of technologies. Please make sure that justify also all the technologies that you are selecting. Uh, present no, also alternative technologies and explain why these technologies are not uh, clearly selected as the best solution possible and why they are not the ideal fit. Um, this should be applied, of course, for all the technologies to be supported. Ideally, uh, the technologies should strengthen each other and there should be some sort of sy synergy between them in order to enhance their potential for mitigation. It is uh, not ideal when one technology is just added to maybe add a little bit more of mitigation, but the added value of this technology is not fully justified. Now, of course, moving to the mitigation potential, uh, we ask you to clearly highlight the mitigation target during the project implementation period. And if it is necessary, um, separate this value from other reduction periods, such as lifetime savings. Uh, we know that for some technologies where the technology lifetime is definitely longer than the period of implementation of the project, this is a significant value, but please make sure to divide those two values, the value of the implementation period and the value that will be mitigated after the end of the project. Uh, please also allow us to understand the basis upon which the project will achieve its mitigation goals. Uh, I want to remind you to keep your goals ambition yet feasible, and the best way to do this is to clearly describe the methodology that you have used to calculate the mitigation potential, uh, to provide the basics, uh, the basic assumptions that you are using, and ideally also provide us with some basic calculations so that we can uh, backtrack the logic that you are using to achieve this uh, potential mitigation. Now let's move to another topic in the next slide, and this topic is gender. Um, with the growing of importance of gender as a cross-cutting topic in the mitigation action facility, it is very important for you to make clear how this topic will be a part of all project activities. Uh, for example, uh, by targeting higher participation of women in the sector where you want to uh, act as part of your project. Um, do not treat gender as an add-on to the project. Please consider gender as a critical part for the implementation of your project. Uh, make sure to consult our gender vision and gender action plan in the mitigation action facility to have a guidance of what uh, we envision to be gender as part of the projects we support in our website. You can find the link uh, posted in this slide. Now, moving to target groups, which is the last um, topic in which I will be uh, speaking today before giving the word to my colleague, Per. Um, it is important for you to align the intervention that you are describing to the groups that you are targeting. Um, make sure to cover all the target groups that are crucial for the success of the project. And be very clear in differentiating the target groups that will be critical for your group and the beneficiaries of the, your, your project intervention. Remember that in some cases, they might be the same, but in many cases, they are not. Please make sure to consider all of the different stakeholders and groups that need to be targeted in your project for it to be successful. Describe and quantify those target groups. And as I said, not only the end beneficiaries. For example, if your project foresees to provide loans to entrepreneurs, make sure to describe and to quantify the financial institutions that you will be targeting uh, in order for them to provide the loans to those entrepreneurs, but do also quantify those entrepreneurs uh, that you will be targeting with this uh, loan mechanism. Um, I hope that this has been uh, helpful for you all, and I will give the word to my colleague Per, who is now going into more details about the specific uh, lessons learned on the different sectors of the mitigation action facility. The word is yours, Per. Thank you, uh, Juan David. 
Um, so without further ado, um, we come to our sectoral observations and let's start with the transport sector. We have seen that the focus of concept notes received is merely on means of transportation, but not on infrastructure. This is just also explained by Juan David. You should consider the national electricity mix when proposing electricity, electric mobility projects. The electricity used to power EV vehicles shall come to the extent possible from renewable sources. Also, consider narrowing the type of EVs targeted. Too many approaches can dampen the feasibility of the project. Different EVs target groups face different barriers and need for support. Also, the charging infrastructure should not be neglected. The business model behind the project must be presented for all relevant stakeholders, as this is key for the rationale as well as the sustainability of the project. Also consider the full life cycle of the supported technologies and make sure to include activities related to the disposal of EV batteries. Don't forget to consider the impact on displacement of old technologies and the informal economy. In the transport sector, the informal economy often plays an important role. Therefore, you should take it into consideration when developing your project concepts. Similarly, consider the impact of displacing the technologies to be replaced, which can easily lead to rebound effects or a high resistance to change. Next slide, please. Now on energy. With all projects, justify, as with all projects, justify the need for the mitigation action facility support, particularly for large scale projects where the support to be provided by the mitigation action facility is only a small portion of the total investment costs. It is important to justify why the support is required to pursue this project. Keep in mind that the mitigation action facility funding is to be used to remove market barriers that prevent investment into mitigation. Under the right conditions and to the extent possible, design projects with a focus on the development of renewable energies. As the goal of the mitigation action facility projects is to trigger transformational change, it is important that projects have a focus on transforming the energy sector towards the use of renewable energies rather than focusing solely on improving access to electricity. And this is also linked to the next point. Given that mini grid projects tend to have a limited mitigation potential, it is worth considering whether providing access to electricity to an off-grid area could be done by extending the reach of the national grid while focusing more on greening the grid's energy mix. In the case of projects supporting biofuels, it is very important to guarantee the sustainability of the supply chain for source materials for biofuels. Please take into account considerations that no, no additional emissions are generated and that there is a continuous supply beyond the implementation of the project. Waste management plans shall be considered. Please ensure that you include a plan for the management of waste generated by your projects for components such as batteries, solar panels, etc. Next slide on energy efficiency. As mentioned before, your project should trigger a sector-wide transformation that is repl replicable and scalable. Therefore, it is not sufficient to submit one-off replacement schemes. Particularly in the field of energy efficiency, 
it is quite feasible to encounter business models that are viable even under current market conditions. Therefore, it is very important for you to justify when the support from the mitigation action facility is needed to implement your project. With the update of national determined contributions, there are more and more dedicated sectoral strategies. Seek to align the objectives of your project with those of the sector you want to focus on. Moreover, try to leverage sectoral regulations to support the implementation of your project. Target incremental cost instead of the whole investment cost specifically if technology is available on the local market. Also address rebound effects and ensure that old equipment is removed from the market. As mentioned before, consider that the management of the technologies raised is supported by the project. Next slide, please. On the industry sector, please elaborate on the business model for all key stakeholders in the value chain. Ensure that there is a market and willingness to pay for green products. Bear in mind the business model of the buyers of these products must be viable. Also, it is important that you carefully identify financial barriers, specifically market barriers to private sector participation. The energy mix and the source of input make up a large part of the industry greenhouse gas balance. They should therefore be scrutinized and their selection justified. Instead of focusing only on low hanging fruits, you should concentrate on an entire production system if this is a possible, if this is possible. Remember that the ultimate goal is to achieve transformational change. Next slide, please. For carbon capture projects, they should focus on the overall reduction of emissions throughout the value chain. For carbon capture and storage projects in particular, care must be taken to ensure that a reliable legal framework is in place in the country concerned, that a long-term management structure is created and that a high retention rate is guaranteed. Projects supporting the use of waste, waste as refuse derived fuel or solid recovered fuel must consider the sustainability of the waste source and strengthen the value chain. These technologies also have to do with the entire production system and the business model for all stakeholders involved. And with that, I hand the floor back to you, Nina. Um, thank you very much, Per, for the presentation. We have foreseen uh, for so few um, moments or a few minutes for Q&A, but I so far don't see any new questions in the chat. I will simply repeat again that, yes, we will publish the presentation on the website of the Mitigation Action Facility. There were also a question regarding the multi-country cross-border project proposals, whether those are eligible or not. Um, again, in a nutshell, you will find a response in a chat. In a nutshell, yes, um, but those should also be justified. There should be some common reasoning why those countries are applying together, why the cross-border project makes sense from the point of view of scale and um, uh, economic and technical viability. Uh, but you will be able to find more information in um, FAQs. Um, on the next slides, I will um, provide a brief overview of the supporting documents that we will have that may um, provide additional information for you and guide you um, through application process expectations of the mitigation action facility. There is considering that we've run, we've launched already 11 calls since um, the start of the 
mitigation action facility. Um, we have collected quite a few uh, frequently asked questions. Um, that's why we would recommend you to take a look at the materials that are published on the website. I still don't see anything in the chat, um, so let's move on with a um, few pieces of additional information. And um, I would also come back to the question of questions. Um, but now I can say if you have questions, if something appears to you after the end of this webinar, you're welcome to send your questions to the contact email of the technical support unit, which is contact at mitigation. Um, heavenaction.org, uh, but you will see it uh, published in one of the next slides. So the first um, supporting document um, that we are um, encourage you to read in um, in detail is a general information document. It is currently available in English, but we are working on a Spanish and French translations. Um, Yes, just um, the document is already available online. If you go to the Call for Projects 2024 webpage, um, you will see the document linked there. And again, it provides a very good overview of the uh, selection process, of the application process. So we would encourage you to read it. Um, on the next slide, are some additional resources that we would also, that we would like to point your attention to. As said, there is a general web page of the Call for Projects 2024 that we continuously updating uh, with um, when new um, documents are published or new guidance is published. You will also find their link to this webinar, to the recording of this webinar and to presentation. It all will be published there. Um, there is already a list of frequently asked questions published on the focusing mainly on the concept phase of the call for projects 2024. There is a very small list of very basic FAQs on the web page of the call itself. But we would again, we would encourage you to look into the document. I also provided a link in the chat. We have 93 questions there, and I'm pretty sure that in majority of cases you will be able to find your um, response to your question there. Um, so if you have a question, you go to the website, you check the website, you download FAQs, you check FAQs. If you really cannot find the response to your question, you contact the technical support unit and we will provide you with a response. So rest assured in this regard. Another uh, useful documents include a few fact sheets on financial mechanisms, on a transformational change, explaining and providing some examples. What are the financial mechanisms, for example, into the fact sheet on financial mechanisms? What are the financial mechanisms we see in our portfolio? What can be considered as financial mechanisms? The same on transformational change. What are the definition? What is the definition of transformational change? How it can be measured? What is the expectations of the mitigation action facility in this regard? Those are four documents. Please take a look. Um, for those who are interested already in the next steps and are curious, how the contract for detailed preparation phase may look like. Um, can we go one slide back? Um, thank you. Uh, there is a link to the contract templates for detailed preparation phase on our website. This is just for your information, but since we also receive uh, sometimes requests like how the template looks like, it is on the website, please take a look. And there are also a few additional papers, driving sectoral decarbonization, gender vision and gender action plan of the mitigation action facility. Again, uh, Juan David um, uh, talked about the gender issue. So if you want to understand a bit more now expectations and goals with regard to gender, take a look at those documents. There are also mitigation guidelines at the project concept phase. Uh, we wanted to provide you with support in terms of how to calculate greenhouse gas emissions at this very first stage of the project idea development. So please take a look at the mitigation guidelines. They provide very useful information depending on the sector, how to start, where to start in order to estimate your um, potential greenhouse gas emission reductions that can be brought by your project. And of course, there are also webinars from the previous call for projects 2023. Um, quite a few questions covered there. So we would also encourage you to browse through those materials. And now to the next slide is about the next steps with regard to this call. 
As said before, webinar recording and presentation will be published on our website. There will be next webinar focusing on Q&As uh, and it will take place. It is planned to take place on the 7th of February at 2 p.m. Uh, Central European time, similarly um, like today. There will be clarification notes, so we will collect your questions and we will publish clarification notes. Um, clarification notes number one will be published on the 17th of January, and then there will be clarification notes number two, I apologize for a mistake in um, the slide, uh, will be published on the 14th of February 2024. As already highlighted many times, always please uh, please make sure to always check the web page of the Call for Projects 2024 in case you have a question, a request, an inquiry, please contact the uh, secretariat, the TSU, at contact at mitigationhaveanaction.org and also make sure to subscribe to our newsletter. The most important date that you need to keep in mind if you're interested in applying under the Call for Projects 2024 is 29th of February, 3 p.m. Central European time. This is a deadline for submitting your project concept through an open application platform. With that, I guess we can conclude this webinar. Please make sure to fill in the survey to provide a few responses. We would really appreciate that. And thanks a lot for your participation. Thanks a lot to all the speakers um, who presented today. And we hope that you have can have a very happy and joyful end of the year. And again, in case of questions, TSU is always there for you. So thanks a lot and have a great weekend ahead. Thank you. Bye-bye.